Welcome to Science Access. In today's class, we'll be continuing our protozoa series part 3 and be following this lecture outline. We'll talk about the clad amoeboid protozoa, where we'll talk about their characteristics. We'll also talk about their pseudopodia, which is a feature in the clad amoeboid protozoa. We'll talk about the types of pseudopodia and their functions. We'll also talk about the phylum amoebozoa and we'll talk about their characteristics. They will take a representative organism, Amoeboid protos, under the phylum Amoebozoa. In the part 4 of this series, we will talk about other phyla under this Amoeboid protozoa clad, such as the Radiolaria, the Secozoa, and even the Foraminiferans. Amoeboid protozoa are free living microscopic protists, though there are few parasitic species. Their body is covered with plasma membrane or shell. And they usually possess pseudopodia for movement and other functions. Let's talk about the pseudopodia. Pseudopodia are cytoplasmic projections that are found in cell membrane of some eukaryotic cells or unicellular organisms. As you are aware, pseudo means force and podia means feet. So, in general, pseudopodia are actually regarded as force feet. That's the reason why you can see pseudopodia in amoeba consisting of a projection of the cytoplasm from maybe one or two places and the other body parts eventually move forward along this projection. The function of the pseudopodia include movement or locomotion, capturing and engulfing food and in some cases anchoring to substrate. You can see the picture of the pseudopodia of amoeba actually engulfing food eventually enclosing it and digesting it inside the body. There are different kinds of pseudopodia and they include the lobopodia, the philopodia, the reticulopodia and the axopoda. The lobopodia have large blunt extension that you can see in the amoebaid cell being displayed on the screen. They are actually responsible for the crawling movement seen in amoeba. They actually contain both the ectoplasm and the endoplasm. As you can see on the screen, the philopodia are thin thread-like extensions containing bundles of microfilaments. They are involved in movement as well as adhesion and exploration of the environment. Example is seen in the euglypha, as you can see on the screen. The next is the reticulopodia, which is found in foraminiferans. As you can see on the board, there are complex network of pseudopodia that enhances the surface area both for capturing food and movement. You can see example of this is found in the Elphidium species. Just look at the network of pseudopodia found in this organism. The last type is the Azopodia. Azopodia is the most complex of all the kind of pseudopodia found in protists and it is found in actinophores. As you can see from the diagram, it is long, stiff pseudopodia supported by microtubules. They are actually involved in capturing food and defense. The phyla under the clad amoeboid protozoa are phylum amoebozoa, phylum radiolaria, foraminifera, and secozoa. In this video, we will be talking only about the phylum amoebozoa. What are the characteristics of the phylum amoebozoa? One, they possess pseudopodia for locomotion and for engulfing food. As you can see from the diagram, the cytoplasm is divided into ectoderm and endoderm. Majority are free living, though there are few parasitic species. They possess or exhibit holozoic mode of nutrition, and their body is actually covered with plasma membrane or shell. Some are often uninucleated, meaning they have one nucleus. Example is amoeba, some are binucleated, possessing two nucleus. Example is cellar and others are actually multinucleated, possessing numerous nucleus as seen in the peromyza. In all, nucleus are monomorphic, meaning they possess one kind of nucleus, unlike the ciliates, which exhibit nuclear dimorphism, possessing two kinds of nucleus, the micro and macro nucleus. They usually reproduce asexually through binary fusion under favorable condition. Why? Under a favorable condition, they reproduce through multiple fusion or sporulation. 
Let's take Amoeba protus as a representative of the phylum Amoebozoa. Amoeba protus is actually a unicellular organism that has the ability to change its shape. This is due to the fact that the body is covered only by the plasma membrane. They usually live in water bodies such as pond, lake, and slow moving rivers. Let's talk about their structure and function. As you can see from the diagram, the structure of the amoeba protus includes the pseudopodia, which is usually used for movement, the cytoplasm, which is divided into the ectoplasm and endoplasm, the food vacuum, the nucleus, the contractor vacuum, which is used for host mode regulation. Let's discuss nutrition in amoeba. As you can see from the diagram, when an amoeba gets close to a food particle, it stretches forth its pseudopodia, engulfing these food particles with the pseudopodia, and eventually a food vacuum is formed in the amoeba. Digestion of food occurs in the food vacuum with the aid of enzymes, and eventually assimilation takes place where essential materials is actually absorbed into the body. Unwanted material is ejected or discharged from the body. Let's talk about respiration or gaseous exchange in amoeba. Gaseous exchange actually occurs through the plasma membrane. Carbon dioxide actually diffuses out while oxygen or dissolved oxygen diffuses into the cell. How do amoeba protos carry out osmoregulation? Osmoregulation is actually the maintenance of the salt water balance in the body of an organism. It is the control of the water content and the concentration of salt in the body of the amoeba protus. Because the amoeba live in freshwater environment, the osmotic concentration inside the body of the amoeba is higher than that in the surrounding environment. Thus, water actually moves inside the body or into the body of the amoeba through the process of osmosis. Now, this water, this excess water that is moving in, is actually expelled using the contractor vacuum, which collects this excess water and periodically expels it out. As you can see from the diagram, excess water enters through osmosis, is collected by the contractor vacuum, which eventually swells and moves towards the edge of the cytoplasm and eventually expels it out. This process occurs periodically. How do amoeba protus carry out reproduction? They reproduce through binary fission under favorable conditions. Why under unfavorable conditions, multiple fission is often used. Let's discuss binary fission. In binary fission, the pseudopodia seen in the parent organism eventually reduces. This is followed by elongation and division of the nucleus. And eventually, the cytoplasm divides to form two daughter amoeba. As you can see from the diagram, while in multiple fission, the parent amoeba undergoes cyst formation where a protective covering is formed around the organism due to unfavorable condition. After secreting a protective covering to form a cyst, the nucleus undergoes repeated division to form numerous nuclei, while the cytoplasm also divides. This results in the formation of numerous daughter cells inside the cyst. When condition is now favorable, the cyst bursts open or is opened to release the numerous cells which develop into independent amoeba. This is a method of actually surviving on favorable condition. Let's talk about the classification of amoeba protos. As we know, the latest classification, the highest hierarchy is the domain and the amoeba is placed under eukaryota or eukarya. Kingdom, Protista, the phylum, Amoebozoa. The classification is actually displayed on the screen. Through the assignment being displayed on the screen, and this will enable you to understand the topic better. This is the end of today's lecture. In the part four of this video, we'll be talking more about other phylum under the clad aviolata. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to support this channel.